Hey there, I am Coach Mia, your favorite stretch therapist, and I am beyond excited to share with you today one of my favorite T-spine mobility uh, sequences. The reason it's one of my faves is because, well, I every time I twist of any kind, I just feel amazing. And anytime I've had any, any of my students or my clients do the same, they felt amazing. So I wanna share this with you. The reason we're focusing on your T-spine, right? So T-spine, starts base of neck right base of your uh, cervical spine and it ends right at like bottom of ribs right at the top of your lumbar spine and it is one of the most complex and the end also the largest part of the spine and the reason it's one of the most complex is because it has uh, a, a lot of movement right you can twist twist you can flex you can extend all within this um, T-spine region. Where people have problems, and those problems may be low back or shoulders typically, is that they're either stuck in one of these positions, you know, bending over, or they do all their extension from the low back and all their rotation from the low back as opposed to the T-spine. And not that the low back or the lumbar spine can't move, it's just not designed to be as mobile as your mid back. It's, it's, it's typically designed to be a little bit more stable. So what I want you to do is kind of gain some of that mobility so that if you are someone that's having problems with shoulder pain or low back pain, or just simply want better range of motion to do more fun stuff and have a better quality of life, then this is the sequence for you. And before we get into it though, please make sure you like this video, subscribe and turn your notifications on. There will be a new stretch or exercise video for you every single Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and I don't want you to miss it. This, this channel right here will get you moving better and with less pain and that's what we all want, right? <laughs> Let's do it. Before we get into this, I just want to introduce my lovely fiance, Sasha Fierce. Uh, she will be our demo person today. And if it looks like she's getting all the moves perfectly, it's because she's very, very flexible. So don't worry about it and don't compare yourself to her. <laughs> all right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is I want you to kind of get lie on your side and you're gonna bring your knees up to 90 degrees, right? So you'll know you're at, can you get out of 90? <laughs> Can't you tell? We've been together for six years. So 90 degrees, you just want to shoot straight out from your butt. Whoop, right there. And you want your knees to be at 90 degrees too. So it's very common to have them kind of close to, to you, like close to your butt, but you want to keep them at about 90. You may have noticed Sasha just relaxed her head. I want you to do the exact same thing. Otherwise, you're going to strain your neck. This isn't about your neck today. So just go ahead and just kind of lay it. It's awkward, there's no pillow there, but just relax it, release those muscles. We'll use them later at another time. This position that your legs are in, this is very difficult to maintain, especially as you're twisting in the opposite direction. But I need you to do it, okay? Because what happens is when you hold this down, you get to kind of help stabilize that low back, that lumbar spine, the part, of the, uh, the part of the spine we said needs to be more on the stable side so that you can then mobilize your T-spine, okay? That's easier said than done, and you're gonna find yourself often uh, probably doing some self-corrections as you go through the sequence. But one of the things you can do to help yourself out is take your inside hand and go ahead and place it on the outside. So now you have your hand holding you down, and then I want you to actively, activating those adductors, right, your inner thigh, actively draw this leg down, okay? And there may be some self-corrections that will take place several times throughout the sequence and that's totally fine. As long as you have that awareness, then you will be good to go. Let's get into the first twist. So we're gonna take this outside hand. We're gonna grab our ribs because the T-spine is connected to the ribs. We're gonna grab those ribs and then we want to open a book, right? Open that book and unwind, right? So twisting away from that bottom leg. And you wanna use your breath. So once you begin that twist, take a deep inhale and exhale. Nice, and come back to start. You're only gonna wanna do about 
two reps here, this, this is fine. And then you can go through the entire sequence again if you like to get some more movement. From here, you're gonna take those fingertips, place them behind your head. And again, we're gonna open up that book. Now, something I wanna show you here, Sash, can you go ahead and not squeeze so hard and um, let those hips slide? Something that may happen is that this top leg may either slide back with you as you twist, or it may just come up as you twist. So we're exaggerating here, but I want you to be aware of that so you can actively press down with your hands and drive those uh, and drive that top knee down. You may even notice that your knees begin to drop a little bit as you're twisting. So you wanna keep them right at that 90 degree angle and open that book, blowing it out and getting a good twist through that T-spine. Next step, you're gonna take that top arm out. We're gonna reach, get a nice good stretch in those rhomboids right in between those shoulder blades. And we're gonna open up that book again. Nice big stretch, exhale. Good, driving the knee down, holding that leg in place and aiming the back of your shoulder to the floor. Now, the reason I say the back of your shoulder and not your hand is because, Sash, come back to the top. It's very easy if you have a, a hypermobile shoulder, right, in the ball and socket joint to take that arm all the way down. And now Sash is touching the floor. Her, show, her back of shoulder is not touching the floor, but if she lets that arm go, her hand is now touching the floor. So it's not the position of your hand we're aiming for that back of shoulder. So you wanna keep that arm in line with your body and just twist from that T-spine, okay? Beautiful. Now we're gonna have a little fun one. You're gonna reach forward again, get a good stretch, and this time we're gonna rotate that arm above our heads, and I want you to rotate uh, as far as you can keep your fingertips on the floor. And as soon as you're done with that, you can just come right on back to start. Now. Sash was able to go full circle. Someone else, as you're rotating, your fingertips may come up right there. If it does, then that's where you stop, reset, and go back to start, okay? And again, you're only doing about two reps here. You can go through the entire sequence again if you like to get some more repetitions in. But the main thing I want you to think about is just go as far as you can with those fingertips. And when you reach that end range, give it a little bit of push. In fact, that actually goes for everything. I forgot to say that. Um, every time you are twisting, when you hit that end range, don't be afraid to give it some muscle. Now, I don't want you to strain yourself trying to uh, get that shoulder to the ground, but giving it some, 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 some activation will help the process. Otherwise, you're letting gravity kind of do all the work for you. And mobility is your, it, what it means is your ability, right? Your strength your capability of, of moving your joint through a range of motion. So in order to move it, that means you have to activate your muscles because muscles move the skeleton. So you need to activate those muscles, hit that end range, give it a little bit of a nudge, about two to four seconds, and then come back to start and reset. And what you'll notice is every time you do this, you'll go a little bit further, a little bit further, and not only are you increasing your range of motion, but you're increasing your strength. So now you have control. You're not just hypermobile throwing your limbs around. You can decide how far you can twist, bend, extend, right? And that is the beautiful part of mobility training. That's when you get to start, go out and play with your kids, play different sports and do all these things and not get hurt because you have control over where your skeleton goes. Sorry, I kind of went, I could preach about this all day. I get super excited. <laughs> Sasha hears this all the time. All right, so we just finished the twist. Now we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get into some deeper stretching here. You're gonna hold this top leg in place. I'm gonna move out the way, and then you're gonna kick your back leg back to you, and you're gonna grab your ankle with that outside hand. So Sash has really long arms, and she's also very flexible, so she's able to grab this ankle very easily. Someone else actually may be just about right here, and that's fine. Once you grab it though, and your knee may be a little bit closer. Once you grab that ankle, even if you have to sit up. Activate the butt of that bottom leg. Kick that leg back. Dang, she kicked me out the way. Not hyperextend. Just <laughs> that's how strong she is. Look at that. Don't hyperextend. Move me out the way. Go ahead and keep this in line with your body. And this is where you're going to take that deep inhale again and 
Get that nice good twist holding this. This leg is gonna wanna move, okay? Because that lumbar is gonna wanna fire up. So you wanna hold that in place and just twist. I'm sorry, I'm all pressing on you. And just twist through that T-spine. Good, nice big breath and come back. You're only doing that once, okay? If you need more repetitions there, go through the entire sequence again. You're only gonna do that one time. Now we wanna switch those legs. So we're gonna bring bottom leg back up to start. Good, top leg comes back, bend it. Keep it in that 90, 90, and then take your inside arm and push yourself up. Or you can do it with the outside like Sash. <laughs> I keep saying inside, but Sash keeps using the outside. <laughs> take that inside arm, push you up because you need it to be here in line with your body right in the center. And we're gonna take that outside arm and we're gonna rotate. <sighs> Give this one a good breath because you're not gonna get a lot of movement here. Uh, and don't let ego play a part of that. Most of us will not get a lot of movement there. That's fine, that's the point. So we just wanna kinda wake up that area and give it a good twist, a really big breath, a nice push at the end. One time is good if you feel you need to go for it, but otherwise you'll get that second rep as you go through the sequence um, a second time. Okay, so we just finished all the rotations. Now let's get into some extinction. Go ahead and stomach on the mat. Good, and we're gonna place your hands, we're gonna push up in a cobra. So most people will have their hands underneath their shoulders. And that's gonna put too much stress on your low back, so I don't want you to do that. Instead, we're gonna place those hands right, yep, at about the chin, or even your ear, somewhere around there, and go ahead and push yourself up. Good, beautiful. Now something that's very common and a lot of times we don't notice is your ear, uh, your ears, <laughs> your shoulders may come up to your ears. So I want you to press them down, right? So activate those lats, pull those shoulders down. Then I want you to imagine a string in the middle of your chest, pulling your chest forward and therefore squeezing your shoulder blades together. This is a, that's, that's gonna be a small movement. It's more about intention than anything else because we want to open up that chest, right? So we wanna push through, sorry, Sash, I got you holding this a long time. Go ahead and come down. So we wanna push through push through those rib cage, extend that T-spine in that stretch position. So that's gonna to be tough, and it's not something you wanna hold long. That's why I release Sash. Give it a good, good push, two to four seconds, and release. So as soon as you've done about two to four reps there, go ahead, flip it to the other side, do the other side. And for a bonus, honestly, if I were you, I would then repeat the entire thing again, go back to where I started, and, and run through it twice. You're gonna notice when you do it the second time, it's gonna be so much easier. You're gonna have a little bit more movement, a little bit more range of motion. It's gonna feel amazing. And that's what I want you to feel. That's what I want you to get out of this. After you're done trying this out at home, please comment below. Let me know how it felt. If you have any questions, if there's another area of your body you would like to focus on, and you want me to shoot a video on it, I will gladly do that for you. Sash is up to the challenge as well. <laughs> In the meantime, go ahead and hit like if you like this video, subscribe, turn on notifications. We will be here every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to help you move better so that you can have a better quality of life, have more fun, and, uh, and not be bogged down with pain. We ain't got time for that. So we will see you next Wednesday, and thank you for tuning in.